So this is your Chili Penguin short, little stove, five kilowatt unit, nice little compact stove. Uh, quite simple door action. And then underneath here we have your little ash pan. So this is your little ash pan tool. Slots into that little slot there, lifts up, and then it's easy to empty in that respect. Acts like a bit of like a shovel, so you can shovel any loose bits out of the bottom. With any ash, uh, once it gets full, um, dispose in a metal container or an area outside where it completely gets cold before then disposing in your bin, etc. Uh, if you're just burning wood, it's quite good just to throw on the garden, really, and in that respect. You're also given a pair of gloves. The stove does get extremely hot. The handle and obviously the glass and hold door really, really hot as well. You have two air controls at the bottom of the stove. So this is the primary air control on the left. This allows air from underneath. This is why you really need to make sure your ash isn't bridging your grate underneath so you do get that airflow. And also then this is your secondary air control which allows air from the top, your air wash system down the door and air coming through from the back. There's also a boost button, which is this circular disc on the front, with a little penguin motif. This then opens and stays vertical at the top. So on lighting, this allows a lot of air into the stove. Reason for that is just to push any uh, moisture out of the stove and to warm the flue. Once the flue gets nice and warm, it's then sucking in, in effect, drawing out of the stove. So then we can start looking to control the burn and closing air controls. So for lighting, both of these fully out, and that's fully open, and then like we said, your boost button circle to the top. Just going to burn a little kindling. So just like a little flame of highlighter in there. And then like I say, because this has got this boost button, we can leave the door closed at the beginning. So just allow the fire then to build up. And like I'm saying, through the first few fires, you will find a bit of an odour coming off the stove. It might look like there's a vapour appearing and sitting in the room. Perfectly natural. This is just the paint curing to the stove itself through heat cycles. So the more heat you build up, the more it might give off that vapour. But then once that's cured, it would be good to carry on and use. So let's let it pick up and then we can look at controlling the burn a little bit later on. Got a little bit of condensation form there, like I said, we're just doing this on the light up. So we've started to get going quite well now, so we can look at closing the boost button. That just drops down and closes off. We are just burning wood at the moment, so we'd look at closing then the primary air control, and then start to depress the secondary to control that you're going to light properly. A couple of smaller logs on top of your kindling, creating a nice hot charcoal bed. That then is the principle of getting a fire really going and getting set up. For relighting purposes and refueling, so obviously as that fire dies down, your flames have ceased, you're left with a nice hot fire bed of charcoal. Air controls open, get everything nice and hot. Always open the door nice and slowly with your glove on. Equalise the pressures. You were just to pull the door straight open, you can then obviously get a mitten straight into the room. So always crack the door, give it a couple of seconds and open nice and slowly. Once you've refueled, once you've got combustion, you can then look at controlling again, closing your primary if you're burning wood, regulate with your secondary, vice versa. If you want to burn smokeless coal, you need more primary air because you need the air from underneath, but you still probably need a little bit of secondary air just to keep the glass clean above. And that's how you carry on and build up over time.